Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Dixon Ticonderoga Our Colors, Their World www.dixonusa.com Learn skills for a whole lifetime of crafting on this season of Hands On. At school, home, or even in sports, each week we've got craft basics and great projects, each with five steps and five main ingredients. And every project teaches a new skill that you can use over and over again. Keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. And remember, be creative. Our first skill for life is knowing the importance of protecting and preserving the environment by going green. Today we're learning about recycling and reusing things we already have. Our first project is a set of lanterns made from recycled plastic cups, perfect for outdoors or at a party. Next, Prudy Veneer introduces us to using our crafting for charity with a project making birdhouses for our feathered friends. Then it's cards that can be planted by making your own paper. Last up, store your treasures in a stained glass design box made from recycled cardboard. So let's get started. Our first project is a bug light set made from plastic recycled cups. Here's what you'll need. First we have plastic cups, we have a light set, a chenille stem, assorted wood shapes, our tacky glue, opaque markers, a few wiggly eyes, and then some basics. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we're going to make three different bugs. We're going to make a bug, a bee, and a ladybug. So the first one I'm going to do is the basic bug, and I've drawn in a blue section here, a blue stripe, and another blue stripe. And I'm using an opaque marker that works on all different surfaces, including plastic. And I'm using the medium, medium tip. So first what we would do is fill in the top all the way across. And you can see you can blend the paint because it'll stay a little bit wet while you're drawing it in. So we would paint this one blue, blue, and blue. Then I'm going to take my yellow marker and then I'm going to paint the stripe in between. And you don't have to be perfect because remember these are going to be hanging up so you're not going to see every little detail. So we would continue painting and do a yellow and another yellow strip. Now in this one I would use, I'm making a B, so I'm going to use black and yellow and do the same thing. Do black, yellow, black, yellow, and black at the bottom. On this last one, which is the ladybug, I've only done one strip of black and then I'm going to do a whole section of red and now I'm going to come back in and add some black dots. And they can be all different sizes. And then our next step is we're going to paint our wood pieces. Now I'm going to go through the colors and what we need. We have six white large circles and two small ones and those are going to be painted white. We're going to paint two of the large teardrops white, two of the hearts blue, two of the smaller hearts yellow, and two more teardrops red and then we're going to decorate them. Here's a good tip for painting. I'm going to tape one of the white ones. I've rolled up some masking tape and taped it down just to my paper towel and stuck it down. That makes it really easy to paint and it doesn't move around. Now I'm going to paint each of my shapes. And they're so easy to paint and because these markers can be used on all different surfaces, the paint goes on really nice and smooth and fills in. Now when I first started I shook these to get the paint down to the tip 
and made sure that the entire paint nib was actually colored with paint. So you'd go through and paint each one of your shapes. Now once you've completed all of your shapes, then you're ready to start assembling. So here I have my two red, and I'm going to add these. I've added black, and then added white dots, and now I'm going to glue some other shapes on top. So I'm going to take my glue, and I'm going to just do one here for you. Put some glue on the back, and I'm using a real nice, thick, heavy, tacky glue. Put a black dot on, and then I'm going to put a little glue and add a white dot. Then I also want to get, get my eyes ready. And to do that, I'm gluing the wiggly eyes right onto the white. So I'll take another one here to show you. Now it's time to start assembling once you've got all your pieces ready. So let's start with this B right here. To assemble the B, we're going to add his wings on the side. Now we're going to cut a slit on the side. Now we're using a craft knife so you should have adult supervision. We're going to cut a slit on this side, another one on this one side for the wings, and then we're going to cut two holes in the top. This is going to be for his antenna. Now remember you can always make these bigger later if they're not big enough. So start out small and then a larger hole in the center because this is where our light set is going to pop through. We've got that. Okay, the next we're going to attach our wings. Now we're going to slide these right into the slit, but to make sure that they stay, we're going to add a little bit of craft glue on the end, and that'll secure it so that it's more secure. I'll poke that in. And we do that, the glue will dry clear, and we'd add another one on the other side. Let's add one of the eyes. Add some glue to the back, and we'd attach our eye on here. Now you may have to hold that for a second just to hold it until it dries, and then we're going to make our antenna. And to make the antenna, we're going to curl it around our finger, and just make a little curly cue like this, and we're going to poke it into the hole. Now this is the time, if you, in, if you need to enlarge it, that would be the time to do it. Now we'd attach the same, the wing on the other side and the other eye and our last antenna. Then we're going to take our light set and poke that through. I'll just pull this out. And you'd start at the beginning of the set and we'd poke it in through the top and just bring it up to the top. So let's take a look at the other bugs. We have here our other bug which has got two hearts and the same wiggly eyes and the antenna. And then over to the ladybug where we've added our spotted wings and our eyes. And that's our bug project. This is our first project in a series about art projects you can use for community service. Um, this is a birdhouse, as you can see. You know, as we build shopping centers and houses and roads, the natural habitat for birds just shrink more and more every year. So what can you do to help? Why, we can do a birdhouse. You can buy a birdhouse to paint or you can build one. I'm working on one that was built. Um, it's easy to do and the plans are on the website. This particular one is made out of cedar so it's a little bit, uh, it's weather resistant. And the tin can fits under there with the dowel that also works as a perch. Uh, we use our, need our usual painting supplies, paint, you know, water, some brushes, and we're going to paint a design that was created by my friend Doxy Keller. Let's start. Doxy started by um, base coating. That's the first coat of paint you put on everything. And everything is really nice and bright and cheery. I love it. You use a big brush to base coat. She did the roof in green, the edges in orange, purple front. Isn't it, those color combinations are great. Um, to decorate the roof, we have big pink polka dots on there. You can use thumbprints if you like, where you dip your thumb into a paint and just put it on there. Or you can fill in with a brush, in which case I would simply, you know, make my pink polka dots all over the place. The front of it is, uh, has some checks, and that makes it a little whimsical. You can use, again, you can use a brush of about this width, I think it's probably about a number 10, to make individual squares, or there's this little brush that is a checkerboard brush. I'm going to load with some white paint. And I'm going to paint squares equidistant apart. Isn't that the best invention you ever saw? Look at that. 
And I'll put squares just above it to make my checks. This is also a good striper brush. So on the back of it, I'm going to stripe to decorate the back. We can add stripes all the way up. To make those checks and stripes come out a little bit, I'm going to add some black line work. So we use a liner brush for that. With a liner brush, you always water your paint down just a little bit so that it flows good. And I can just outline these checks. See how much they stand out when you do that. There, and you don't have to follow the lines exactly. It's more fun on a whimsical piece if you don't. The paint skips a little bit here and there. That just makes more fun in the design. I could double line it, which would be even better, but I want to show you how to add some decoration to the roof. You can put a curvy line up here, and it'll go all the way down. And we can finish off with some dip dots. Dip dots are easy and fun to do. You just use a brush handle, load with some paint, and add some dots. It can be any color that you like. Maybe we'll even mix it up a little bit. So I'm adding some purple. And as many as you want. Some green would look nice in here too. This is rough wood, so sometimes you have to add a little more paint to make that dot show up. When you finish it off, you assemble. And I want to show you how this works. This is a tin can is the nesting part. The tin can fits right in here, inside. And this dowel works to hold that tin can in and also serves as a perch fun and interesting, and you learned a lot about painting, and you're helping out our birds. Our next project is a recycle card made from handmade paper. It says, plant seeds, a friendship. To make this card, here's what you'll need. We've started out with handmade paper, or you can make your own, a scrap of construction paper in orange. We're using brush acrylics, some paint markers, wood shapes in various different sizes, and then our basics. We have basic tacky glue, a glue pen, and scissors. So let's get started. Here's the first step. First we want to paint our shapes. We're going to paint one of the circles blue, one yellow. We need two orange teardrops, two yellow, three brown, and then one black oval. And just like I showed you on the first project, I've taped them down with masking tape so they stay in place. So we go with our medium markers, and I'm just going to paint in the wood. Now once they are completed, if you'd like, you can let them dry and you might want to even go around the outside edges. But we'll leave those dry and we continue painting all of our shapes until each one of them is done. Then when they're totally dry, we'll peel them off the tape. So now we have our shapes. Our next step is to get started on our card. So I've got my handmade paper and I've cut it into a rectangle and folded it in half and you can see there are seeds embedded right in the actual paper. Now I'm going to put um, our banner across the side which is going to be plant seeds. I've cut out a little piece of orange paper and I'm going to take a fine marker and write plant seeds. And it's always nice to use your own handwriting when you're making a personalized gift. Then I'm going to take my glue pen and I'm going to put the glue along the edge of the card, right where I want this to be, and then lay my construction paper down. The next thing I want to do is write three little um, elements of friendship, which are respect, love, and trust. So I've come back to my construction paper and I'm going to cut a piece about the right size. Remember, you can trim this afterwards. So I'll do my longest word first which is respect. And then I do the same for love and trust and then I'll place them on my card. I'm going to use my glue pen again. 
And on this time, I'm going to put it on the back of this so I know exactly where I'd like to place it. So I put all three sentiments on the front. So now we've got the front of our card started. Now the next thing we want to do is add the grass at the bottom, move this to the side, and then also add the sun at the top. So let me put my glue down. And I'm going to use my acrylic brush paints. And this, the brush is actually in the paint, so the paint is flowing right down into the brush. So I'm going to take the yellow that I've already painted, and this time I'm going to use a tacky glue because it's a little bit thicker, and also because I'm using wood. Put that on the back and apply that in the center, or into the corner. Now I'm going to come back with the brush, and I want to do it really kind of just not very perfect and just make the rays coming out of the sun. And you can squeeze from here and that'll bring more paint. But I'm doing it kind of carefully so I don't get too much paint out. And squeeze and you can go right onto your sentiment. We'll let that dry. Then on the green I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. And I'm actually using the brush to smear it in because I want it to be, look just like grass and we want it a nice natural look on the bottom and we'd let that dry. Now our next step is we want to add our seeds. So I've taken those three brown teardrops that I've painted. I'm going to take my tacky glue again and I'm going to put a seed for each one of these. So each one of these sentiments is a seed. So trust, love, and respect. Now our set, our front of our card is completed. Now let's go to the center. I'm going to take one that I've already got ready here and go to the inside. And what we want to do is create a flower shape inside. So I'm going to take my blue, put that in the center, and then I'm going to take all of my other teardrop shapes and I'm going to place those around, um, going between the different colors. And let's add a couple more. I don't have the other ones painted so we'll add these in. And then I'm going to come back and write the word blooms in the top here and then write friendship across the top. So I'm going to turn it this way so I can read it. Friendship and then blooms. And then you'd glue all of your other pieces down. And then our last step is when you can come back to your front finished card and I've got one here with all the pieces completed. I've also added this black which is the hole where you're planting things in and you can go around and add a little bit of detail by going around each of these little squares and then around the whole edge of the card. If you take a look at the finished one you can see I've added it around the sun, around it plant seeds and around each one of the words and then the whole outside edge of the card. And that's our Plant Seeds of Friendship. Our next project is a rainbow box. You can make this from a recycled cardboard box or you can start out with watercolor paper like we did. And here's what you'll need. We have watercolor paper. You can choose either a plain or a metallic set of watercolors. We're also using an oil pastel crayon. And then our basics. We have a scoring tool, scissors, a ruler, and an extra paintbrush. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is transfer your pattern, which are all available on the website. You can run it right through your printer. So this is the pattern for the top of the box, and this is the pattern for the bottom of the box. The next thing is to take your oil crayon, and it's really important that you use an oil crayon or something with wax in it, because that's what's going to be your resist so that your colors don't move. So I'm going to go through and paint or color in the squares, all the way around the edges. I'm going to color in each one of these and then I'm also going to color in the, the actual outline of my butterfly and I'm going to go all around each edge. When that's completed what will happen is that this will act as a resist and then none of my watercolors will bleed. Now I'm ready to start coloring. I'm going to lay aside my crayon now these are very, very intense colors and you can see they're arranged in color order. So we have red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, so you always know all of your color theory. Now the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take my dry brush and I'm going to dip it in some water 
And I'm going to first do my center sections of the butterfly wings. Now I'm putting a little bit of water on first and the reason being is that these colors are so bright and so vivid we want them to run together. So I'm going to do that and then I would also do in between each one of these little squares. So I'll just do a couple now. now I'm going to dip my paintbrush in water and get it nice and wet and then I'm going to go first to my yellow. And I'm going to move my paintbrush all the way around into my colors and you can see how intense the color gets and you can really see the color come through. Now I'm going to start by painting on the outside edge. And it's important to, that you had that water on first. If you're not wet enough, the colors won't run together. I'm going to dip back in, go back in my water and get a nice saturation of color on my brush. And I'll do the same on my squares. Now next I'm going to rinse this off, blot it on my paper towel, and now I'm going to go into the orange. This is when you get that real pretty effect of the color running. And we want it to run, and that's why I've got all this extra water, because as it dries, then you'll get a really pretty effect on the coloring. And I'll go back on here. Now I would complete all of the orange sections and all of these around this edge. I'm going to move that to the side. And then the next step is to do my box. Now in my box I'm going to use blue as my primary color, but it's important to first wet the entire box down. Since we're going to have only a, enough time to do one section, I'm going to do the center section first. And you don't have to worry about going outside the lines at all because we've got, um, we're going to cut this out later. So now I've rinsed my brush and now I'm going to pick up my blue. And I want to have real big bold sections of color. Dip back in my water. This is a project where you really can't use too much water. Now I want to have kind of a variegated effect with purple. So I'm going to dip back in my water and go then right into the purple and fill in some of the the white areas. Now I'd continue on and do the whole box, but you can see how intense these colors are. And you can make them as dark or as light as you'd like. Now I'd continue on until the entire box is covered. And then I'm ready. While, while we've been working on this one, we've dried our front, so now we have the yellow and the orange, and now we're going to add the blue around the outside edge. Again, I'm always going to go back to my dry brush or my wet brush that doesn't have any color and I'm going to do the outside of my butterfly. Add some water and I'm going to do the same step I just completed with the blue and add this in. But you can see because of the wax or the oil in the crayons, it's not going to bleed in. I'll add that on. It helps you paint a lot neater. And we'll let that spread just into each of the sections. Now our next step is to do the, set, uh, the outside edge of the wings and we need to add some pink. So to do the pink, what I'm going to do is add a, a little bit of red, add a little bit of extra water just to make it lighter, and I'm again going to take my wet brush again, go around the outside edges of here, and then I'm going to add my pink. Now you can see right here on the edge I got a little bit of extra blue here. That's why you have your paper towel handy. You can just blot that up because before the watercolor dries it will easy, easily blot up from your watercolor paper. Now if we take it over to here you can see the little difference on this one is I made this one metallic by using metallic watercolors. I have the top and the bottom completed. And then I cut each one of these out with my scissors, being careful to cut all my tabs. I've got two completed here. They're all cut out. And now I'm going to use my scoring tool or an old pen, put my ruler down and score along the edge. This way that you'll get a nice, clean and crisp box. I'm going to fold my sides up and then and then I'd apply rubber cement along the edge here to close that up. And if we take a look at the finished box, we'd be all done.
And that's today's show. Remember, protect the environment and recycle. A special thanks to Prudy Veneer. In the coming weeks, we'll have more projects to help others, a skill you want to develop and keep all of your life. Thank you for watching Hands On. Next week, it's back outside to learn new skills for everyday life featuring things we find in nature. Hope to see you then on Hands On. Projects from today's show plus other ideas are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is program 1101. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Dixon Ticonderoga Our Colors, Their World www.dixonusa.com <laughs>